met Derek in 1986. I offered to work on his solo stuff or just work with him, you know. And he played on Buddy Miles stuff with us. And then he kind of disappeared for a minute. We heard that he got the Alice Cooper gig. We were like, man, there goes Derek. <laughs> Off and running, man. The young lad. In a long time since I've known Derek, since probably 1992, he came to my attention when he was working with Brad Gillis on a record called Gil Rock Ranch. On this record, Derek kind of cuts his teeth and shows uh, some promises, you know, one day becoming one of the greatest uh, progressive rock keyboardists in the world. Got the call from Derek, and we got together and jammed. You know, we just needed to feel the connection, if there was any chemistry, and we, we jammed and got on rather well. And uh, through that first meeting, um, Derek, consequently had asked me to um, perhaps contribute to the writing as well. It was as simple as that, really. That's how the whole process started. Once Virgil sat on the kit, it became really clear that he was on a whole nother musical level. I had never heard anyone play drums like that before. When it came time to sequence uh, the Planet X record, we were really in favor of using the trilogy Atlantis. Here's this big epic prog masterpiece you know, I don't know how many minutes long. We thought it really kind of showed Derek's, uh, you know, writing and the virtuosity of the musicians. started playing this eighth note pattern, we decided that what I played should be the main riff of the song, so I had to go back and relearn those notes. I started playing certain rhythms that eventually became the foundation of part one of the trilogy, Apocalypse. I gave Derek um, a copy of me playing those rhythms and uh, he kind of put the track together from that and so that was a that was just a co-write rhythm and notes harmony
Derek the beard. He threw the melody on top of that. And that's that. That's how we came up with the trilogy. Well, he definitely didn't slack in the cats he brought in, that's for sure. He brought in Virgil, who was phenomenal. Tony Franklin playing bass, that was amazing. Derek and I first met in the mid-90s. We were working on a Prince tribute album, doing a recording session. Vinnie Caliuta was on drums. I remember just there were some jams that happened between the, the, between the take and everything. And, it's like, whoa, these guys are at some incredible musical level. And Derek and myself connected and everything, and um, that was cool and everything. And then he gave me a call and said, hey, would you be interested in playing on my first solo album? And I said, yeah, of course, of course. Remember getting Brett Garson involved, my good Australian mate, wonderful guitar player and he really contributed a lot to uh, the, the sound of that record. I remember when I was approached to uh, record the Planet X album, I just jumped at the chance. I, I had to I turn that down to work with, well, at that time, two of the guys that I considered to be the best in the world at what they do, Derek and Virgil. And then, of course, when Tony Franklin got involved, that was uh, just another, another reason to, to accept the offer. I first heard <laughs> that music and I'm like in my head I'm thinking wow I I might be in trouble here am I gonna be able to get through this stuff it was it was very intense very complex music definitely the hardest material I've ever I'd attempted at that stage of my career I was in the middle of recording my keyboard tracks when I got a call from the guys. They were on a conference call and they informed me that they were making a change in the keyboard department and I was out. Letting Derek go from Dream Theater for me personally was really, really hard because I love Derek. I really do. And I love his playing. More than any of the other members in Dream Theater, he and I really clicked and had a great connection musically and personally. There was a point towards the end of Derek's time in the band around mid-1998 where I actually walked away from the band and I almost left the band and the band almost broke up because there was so much business bullshit. I mean, Derek, unfortunately, was in the right band at the wrong time. Towards the end of 98, uh, we made a decision that we needed to shake things up. And if Dream Theater was going to continue, we had to make a lot of changes. I didn't see it coming. I mean, three weeks earlier, we played some shows on the East Coast. And over dinner, we were talking about the next record and the plans for the following year. So I thought everything was business as usual. We made the conference call and it was heartbreaking. You know, that's, that's never easy. It's never easy when you have to let somebody go on bad terms. But it's really difficult when you have to let them go and you're, you're, you know, there's really not any, there wasn't any straw that broke the camel's back. I don't think Derek saw it coming. It wasn't like he fucked up and missed a gig or showed up drunk or, you know, wasn't a good player. It was just really a, a personality difference and I think the band needing a different kind of personality in the band. seven stages of grief that one goes through when tragedy occurs. I just skipped right to the stage of being fucking pissed. Let's get this thing out. 
and jumped back in the saddle and started cutting and never looked back. It all came together and it's it's one of those albums that I, I look back at and listen it's like, wow. I still listen to that first Planet X album and to me, uh, almost 20 years later, it sounds as fresh and exciting as it did the day it was released. So it's a testament to the incredible writing and the production and the talent of uh, all the people involved. And the opening track, Apocalypse, was, was just, just, it was like, just, it was the, the sickest, most technical thing I'd ever heard. Even the title, Apocalypse, was kind of almost like mocking Metropolis, you know, it was kind of making a mockery of, of, of uh, that whole kind of style of writing. Derek's hard to keep down, you know, meeting new people, working with Virgil Donati and Tony Franklin and others, and uh, pretty incredible, the uh, energy that he had. Derek pulled something out of me uh, that I truly didn't even know that I was capable of. When Derek put this together and he added that heavy metal edge to fusion music, it made it really fun and new and exciting. I think the result was great. I think he really started a whole genre on his own. Pretty great. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard the Planet X album, I think... I think it probably achieved exactly what Derek was intending to do, and it struck <laughs> fear into the heart of, of uh, you know, the musician in me. And I, I, I can guarantee that that was Derek's intention. I knew, I could tell he was trying to make a record that would out Dream Theater, Dream Theater, and I think he totally succeeded.